Fx Sports Studio. It's the show about you and for you. Here's your hosts, Dr. Jeff Golini and Brian Andrews. Well, welcome to another episode of the EFX Sports Show live on ESPN 910 Radio. Dr. Jeff Galini here with Brian Andrews, and it is another showtime. Showtime is where it's at. That's where we are. We always love answering <clears throat> questions and hosting this show because we have such an amazing audience, don't we? Man, I tell you, we sure do. It, it has been uh, a lot of fun here. And they're very loyal, so... Like you just said, this is the EFX Sports Show on ESPN 910, and this is the show of athletes, by athletes, and for athletes in every sport and walk of life. Now, athletes are always looking for the edge, and it could be a new diet, training techniques, supplements, or whatever the case may be. However, our very own Dr. Jeff knows there is one thing that trumps all of these things put together. And what is it, you ask? Well, stay tuned, and you're going to find out. The Mailbag Q&A. It is always filled up with great questions, and the good thing is they're all digital, so we're saving trees and helping people perform better and get healthier at the same time. (laughs) Now, for example, should you hire a personal trainer? Here's a big one. Does muscle really turn to fat when you get older? And what is the best exercise to build big biceps? Remember, last week we talked about triceps. We're going to answer these and more. And then last, but certainly not least, is our spotlight segment. And this time we have a great guest who is going to take us outside of the box when it comes to supplements and that sort of thing. Her uh, name is Stacy Chalemi, and she is an expert in all things herbal. That's a really interesting category. And today she's going to share how even the simplest compounds from nature can supercharge your life, health, and performance, so you definitely don't want to miss her. So now that this episode of the EFX Sports Show is teed up and ready, Dr. Jeff, you know what I'm going to say, take it away. (laughs) <laughs> That's kind of like that Johnny Carson, man. Here's Johnny. <laughs> Here's Dr. Jeff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, man. So uh, my tip of the week is really uh, an interesting topic. I call it what your mind can conceive and believe you can achieve. You know, too many times of that as athletes, we fail before we even start. And that's the same for business and life. You know, if you don't think you can and you don't believe you can, don't even do it. You're not going to. As an athlete, I always mentally prepared uh, for a game. And it wasn't just, you know, game day. It was the week before, you know, getting ready, thinking about what I'm going to do, situations I'm going to be in. When I power lifted, I always visualized getting under that bar, handling the weight that I was going to start with. I knew where I was going to go. I didn't wing anything at the meet. Everything was planned out. As a matter of fact, uh, when I was in college, my freshman year, I also played basketball besides football, and I wasn't a very good foul shooter. I shot about 62%, 60% from the foul line, and the psychology department was doing a study in something called psychocybernetics, which is visualization, and I participated in that for 30 days, and after a month, my foul shoot uh, percent went up to over 99%. And all I did was, again, mentally prepared. I saw myself every night at the foul line in in the same clothes, everything I did. And I visualized it going in, in, swish, swish, all net. And uh, that carried through. So again, you know, we always hear about being positive. That's the whole tip. You know, be positive. Believe that you can do something because the hindrance to you becoming a success is fear. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? You're going to fail. If you do, you take a step back. Think about your comeback, you know? So again, there's nothing wrong with taking a stop, taking a little step back and getting ready to make a comeback or or redirect or fix whatever it is that didn't work the first time. But again, you know, be positive, believe, and guarantee you will achieve. Fantastic. I'm a huge, huge believer in the power of the mind. And I think it is probably the single most overlooked thing, you know, when it comes to especially like sports, athletics, you know, everyone wants to be the fastest runner. But we all know just even when you're not performing, when you just don't feel quite right, it just it messes up your day. It really dictates 
how successful you're going to be in that given day. You know, you got stress, something's on your mind. And I do know this too, that a massively quick growing category is a sports psychology, yeah. which is really in this realm because they've realized that they have these tremendous, tremendous athletes who have skill beyond anything we could ever imagine. And you kind of go, why do they still fail? Well, part is because they're human. Well, exactly. So there you go. Think about so it. So any, uh, in any actual like techniques or things you want to just drop real quick? Yeah, I mean, in other I, words, I, I, there's I, steps they should take to, to actually do this. Yeah, so let's just take an example. You know, let's say, um, let's say you you're a powerlifter, or let's say you're going to go into the gym and squat. You know, don't pull up talking on your cell phone, joking around with your buddies, hitting on the girl, and then you go do a squat. You know, I start mentally preparing um, the night before for that workout. You know, I'm thinking about what I'm going to do. So um, before I put a whole bunch of weight on my neck and go out there, you know, again, I got to have my mind in the right uh, mind frame. So again, you got to think about it. You got to see yourself doing it. You got to see yourself succeed. You know, don't see yourself not only, you know, bottoming out or dropping it or not being able to handle it. But most people, you know, they don't prepare. They just go in and do. So again, you got to mentally think about what it is you're going to do. See yourself successfully doing it. And see yourself in whatever you're going to wear to the gym, you know. Um, think about those details, tying your gym shoes, putting your weight belt on, you know, putting your knee wraps on. I mean, kind of go through the whole thing. If you listen to music, see yourself putting your headset on, cranking up your jam. And again, you'll be amazed, no matter what your sport is, um, how well your performances will increase. Well, and I think people could relate to that simply because think of how many times in life things you've done where... Think of what you know, people think, oh, their worst fear, and they keep dwelling on that, and their minds either, they're playing this kind of picture of what might happen, and then they you know they get to the foul line or whatever and choke and fail, or it could yep. be a business presentation, whatever. That's why visualization is so incredibly powerful, and it leads to what you ultimately achieve. It's really that simple. And, and if you're, it's not a fancy supplement, but no. boy, it beats anything that's ever been invented. And if anybody's following any of the NBA playoffs, uh, you know, where they show the guys coming in to the locker room, you'll see the majority of them. They got headsets on. And, and again, this is part of their mental prep. You know, they're tuning out everything. That music is helping them concentrate on what they need to do out there. Um, if you ever hear LeBron James talk about it, again, I mean, you know, there's something about music that takes you to a whole nother place and you can really concentrate and think about what you've got to do in that game. Absolutely. So, Really take this one to heart, and I promise you, if you focus on this element and practice this, everything else in your life, I'm talking about in business, relationships, outside of just, you know, in the gym or on the field, is going to improve dramatically. Just try it. What do you have to lose? Nothing. So, the ever-growing mailbag. You know, man, we get so many questions now that we'd have to have like a, a two-week long show just to get all the questions done in a week. <laughs> well, you know, maybe what we should do is we'll reserve instead of uh, having a guest on one day, we'll just do a full basic show of these Q&A so we can get to more of them and kind of uh, clear clear the bag out for more, even though the good thing is, like I said before, it's digital. Yeah. <laughs> so we're not killing trees. No, no. So what do you got, man? We got any uh, good questions for today? No, we have phenomenal questions. Love it. Right to this one from Rhonda Merrick. And of course, she found us through Facebook, as most now do these days. How important do you think it is to work with a personal trainer? I'd consider myself at the intermediate level of fitness. Maybe it will help me achieve more and faster. Oh, boy. Talk about poking the bear. <laughs> <laughs> you know... First of all, you got to really, first of all, let me say, yeah, if you really want to gain knowledge, advance whatever it is you're doing, if you can find a legitimate expert or a consultant, hey, that's what we're doing, right? We're passing on information to people. Same way with trainers, but there's something about the trainer realm that a lot of these gyms will hire anybody. It's like a job, you know, oh, you know, you want to apply for McDonald's, here you go. You're now on the front line. Oh, you want to be a trainer? Okay, here you go. You're now a trainer. So that's the only issue I have with it is you got to really find out what the credentials are of that trainer. And just because they have a certification, a lot of places you can go online and, you know, you fill out a 10-page little assay and they'll give you a certification. So 
you want to make sure that, first of all, they're in shape themselves. I see too many trainers at my gyms here, Brian, that you look at them and go, guy or gal, how about you exercise yourself before you start putting someone else through a workout? So if they look like they, they're in shape and they know what they're talking about, then that's number one. Number two, check out their credentials. How long have they been a trainer? Are they certified? Then I would talk to them, you know, ask them some questions, at least things that you know about and see how they answer them. And if you can find somebody good, then I would say, yeah, if you really want to, you know, kick it up and maybe learn some new stuff, some new techniques, some new styles, then, you know, it might be worth hiring a trainer for, for a short period of time. Yeah, I would have to agree with that. And and like you said, really, at the end of the day, it's all about vetting the person you're going to entrust your uh, <laughs> your body and your results to. I, I know, in fact, of a uh, very large, large national gym chain. And I was just interested, asking one time about how they did their programs, you know, the trainers. They basically sent them off to basically some corporate office somewhere where they got trained for, I think it was like four days or five days. And then they basically said, okay, you're certified. You're now <laughs> one of our trainers. Wow. How on earth are you going to become a quote-unquote expert in training other people to do that? Now, I guess <laughs> that's a simple way to do it because they know that when you see the word trainer on their shirt or whatever, you think that person's an expert. Now, beyond that, should this person actually ever consider it? I would say sure. Mm -hmm. In fact, I even knew a guy who was an extremely advanced bodybuilder, physique type guy, and he would just for the sake of something new and different to kind of shake himself up, if you will, you know, kind of try something new. He basically hired personal trainers from here and there just to kind of give him a different experience. Just maybe he'd learn a little nugget here and there. And think about this. Even the greats in the world all have coaches. They yeah. don't do it all by themselves. I mean, if you saw the entourage it takes for LeBron James to be LeBron James, yeah, yeah I think people would be pretty shocked that he's not just him practicing you know, with his buddies and then uh, maybe a little at night. He's got probably a nutritionist. He's probably got a, a sports psychologist. Oh, deal. trainers. He who he is. I kind of like the word coach. You know, I think if they called him coach, that would make him more qualified. But some of them, you know, aren't typically coaches. And again, you know, if you are looking to be trained, don't be one of those people that sit there and have a conversation because most trainers, if you want to pay them to talk to you, they won't train them. But when I was a personal trainer and you hired me and you started talking to me, I mean, I would be a little rude uh, and say, you know what? You're not paying me to have a conversation. I'll do that for free. You know, I'm here to train you. I don't have time to talk to you. And I mean, I literally would make them work one thing after the next, you know, because again, I wanted to see them reach their goals, not uh, be a psychiatrist or a babysitter. You can go to the, the hair salon or, you know, the protein <laughs> bar for that. <laughs> Yeah, I and mean, I just thought of something real quick. We we have to go to break here in like 30 seconds. But just before that, um, why don't you give out real quick how people can contact you? Because I know you give away a lot of free training programs that other yeah. people would probably charge literally hundreds of dollars. I'm talking about diets and full you know exercise programs. Yeah, absolutely. If you do need a plan to help you get started, um, send me an email, drj, drj at allamph.com or look at, look me up on Facebook. Dr. Jeff Galini, and you can just message me or respond to one of my things there, and I'll direct you on how to get that. There you go. Like we said, it comes at the very low, low price of free. And don't <laughs> yes. let that, don't feel like that's not valuable. I mean, this is years and years of experience packed into these documents you're going to receive. So, again, you have nothing to lose. So, it's just kind of our gift back to the industry and to our listeners. So, Again, feel free to hit them up and get that info. But anyway, that's all we can do for this segment. Let's go ahead and go to break. And when we come back, we're going to dive right back into the uh, all-important worldwide mailbag. Breaking down the fitness machine and serving it up to you on a platter, the EFX Sports Show is on your radio. EFX! Let's go! Woo! We can win this one! Go team! Yes! Go team! Defense, defense. Woo! Come on. <laughs> Dude, whose mom is that? <sighs> no idea. Not mine. Not mine. <laughs> Definitely not mine. Go team! Let's go! Woo! EFX Sports is a proud supporter of Billings High School Athletics. Just like that mom in the crowd, EFX Sports cheers for high school students to be the best. 
Make sure your teens are healthier this year by getting them off of the popular sugary drinks that claim to provide the electrolytes they need. Instead, use EFX Sports Carbolin. It's made right here in Billings and has no sugars. Just the healthy performance carbs that your kid's body craves during games. Call EFX Sports at 245-5793 in the Heights at All American Pharmaceutical, and they'll be happy to help you understand what you can do to help your kids live healthier, stronger lives. EFX Sports, formulated to win. Hey, my name is Kyle, and I live right here in Billings. I would like to talk just for a minute about EFX Sports. At the beginning of this year, I took the EFX Resolution Challenge, which essentially it challenged me for three months to get in the best shape that I could, but by only watching what I eat, going to the gym for an hour a day, and using EFX Sports proteins and supplements. Well, in 90 days, I lost 27 pounds and almost four inches in the waist. That's all I did. The great thing about EFX Sports is, first of all, it's made right here in the Billings Heights at All American Pharmaceutical. Second, it works. There's no tricks or quick weight loss tricks. It's just a plan. Plan, that's it. If you would like to see what EFX Sports can do for you to get in shape once and for all, just call them, like I did, 406-245-5793. That's 245-5793. Learn how understanding nutrition can change your life today. Also check them out online at efxsports.com. And if you'd like to double check and make sure that everything that I am telling you is true, just check out my fan page on Facebook, Kyle Benton Resolution Challenge, and you can see my entire journey right there on Facebook. EFX Sports, formulated to win. Well, welcome back to the EFX Sports Show live on ESPN 910 Radio. Dr. Jeff Galini with Brian Andrews. And if you're just tuning in, we are in the middle of our Q&A. This is where we answer your questions uh, as listeners, either that come in via email Facebook, uh, we currently are not taking live calls. Um, maybe one day we will. If you missed the first half of the show, you can find it on podcast all over the place. iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, you name it, they got it. So, Brian, uh, looks like we got another good question here from Mark. Yeah, this is one of those, um, I would say, one of the mother of all myths. <laughs> I'm going to put it in that, <laughs> literally that category because... I think I've heard this since the first day I ever set foot in a gym, and it's this. Ready? Yep. Guys, is there any truth to the claim that my muscles will turn to fat if I stop training? Someone I respect but I don't think is knowledgeable in this area told me not to put on too much muscle at my age, which is 24, because when I get older, it could turn to fat. And that's from Mark Lewis, of course, via Facebook. You know, you jump on that one? I do. I remember when I was young, and I don't remember who told me that, but it was some old timer that said, oh, you know, don't be lifting weights because it's when you get older, it all turns to fat, all that muscle. And I was like, what? And they're like, yeah, it's, you're, you're going to be fat. First of all, let's bust the myth. It is biologically, chemically impossible for muscle to convert too fat (laughs) so (laughs) that can't happen what happens is and the reason why this whole phenomena uh, comes into people's minds is as we get older um, number one our testosterone levels both men and women uh, decrease and that makes it difficult for us to burn body fat we've got to adjust our diets we've got to exercise more but if we don't then what happens is, is we decrease our muscle mass and we increase our fat mass. And that's because most people start eating crappy. They don't change their diets as they get older. They quit exercising like they did when they were 24 um, and they become couch potatoes. Guess what? You eat a bunch of junk, you're going to get fat. Yeah, and I think that, yeah, a slight variant to the answer there is when you're active, let's say you're 24, let's just say uh, Mark here eats 3,000 calories a day. And that's going to help him sustain and or grow his muscle mass. If down the road, he's much, much less active and eating 3,000 calories, guess what? You are going to put on fat. And that kind of almost gives you the illusion that it all converted from muscle to fat. But you're right. These are completely different types of tissue. How does one become the other? <laughs> that's, I mean, God didn't design us that way to begin with. So don't yeah. worry about it. Yep. So there you go. You just, you'll know. As you start to age, uh, things start to change, and you've got to make adjustments. Uh, For most people, you know, it starts about 22 or 23. 
It's not like when you're, you know, nine or 10 years old and you can eat tons of candy and fried foods. I mean, you start, you have to start to adjust your lifestyle a little bit along with adjusting your, your activity levels. Yeah. So maybe in a nutshell, I'm going to say this. If you know that, what we just laid out for you, I say, man, get as big and much muscle as you can, right? Yeah. <laughs> big buff and beautiful, baby. That's the way to go. Big buff there. The three Bs. Yep. The three Bs of life. Big Carl Newton, man. I wonder if he uh, developed a fig Newton. But anyhow, he came in on Facebook I don't know. and said, stretching is important, I know. Is it best before or after a workout? Brian, what do you, what's your take on that? Well, here's the very, very, very simplistic answer to it. It's best before and mm. after. Now, I guess if you have to pick one, I would, of course, say before because you want to prep those muscles. Kind of like, you know, you want to, you don't just go in and throw four or five on the bar and start squatting. You've got to, you know, work up to that to get the blood flow. And you're, you're, you're prepping the muscles to perform at their peak. And by not stretching them, you're not going to get those tissues more elastic. You're not going to get the blood flow you need. There's just you can just try that one time and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Now let's just talk about the after part. Now that you're done, the muscles want to contract. They're tight. You, you know, you really worked them hard, and by doing some more stretching of those key areas afterwards, you're going to increase the blood flow, which helps remove the toxin buildup, and you're going to recover faster. And if you want to take it to the next level, you can get massages and that sort of thing. But we're just going to stick to this one of the stretching part. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I agree. You know, uh, if you had to pick one, I would say pre. I mean, you always want to stretch and loosen up beforehand. But there is something to when you get done, you know, stretching a little bit, um, again, depending on your sport. So I don't think you could go wrong doing it one way or the other or both. So. Yes, don't just do one or the other. If you have to and you just limit it for time, of course, do it before. Uh, in fact, we had RJ on, if you remember, yeah. the power lifter, who's like superhuman strong for being 160-some-odd you know, pounds. And the simple thing there is he talked about he did his whole routine, and then he would stretch for almost like an hour afterward. Absolutely. A lot of, a lot of athletes do. And, again, it's all about preventing. You know, when you are contracting those muscles, I mean, they are getting tight. So a lot of people – get hurt and pull stuff outside of the gym. And again, that's why, you know, to stretch afterwards um, is a good thing. All right. Well, there you go, Big Carl. Let's move on to this one from Lisa Bradley. Okay, let's see. I've been at it for a year and I'm determined to reach my goals. What are your thoughts regarding raw food diets? Thanks. <laughs> Ooh, raw food diets. So we know yeah. that she's not talking about eating raw chicken and stuff. I hope not. <laughs> Normally when people talk about that, they're talking more about raw nuts, raw fruits, raw vegetables versus cooked. I'm a favor of the you diet. You know, you got to find what works for you. Obviously, we know that eating things closer to the farm are contain the most nutrients. You know, as we start to process and cook and boil you know, we end up losing some of the nutrients. Brian, what are your thoughts on that? I think she's probably talking about more of the the diet plan than just in general. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm just going to try to give a cursory overview, but yeah. I think it should be yeah, good enough for, for what she's asking here. So theoretically, the concept of a raw food diet, is it sounds great, and its proponents report that you get benefits like weight loss, you increase your energy, you improve your immune function, and it even has anti-aging properties. And who doesn't want all that, for crying out loud? Now, this is mainly because raw foods tend to have greater amounts of the nutrients that, they, you know, that are in them naturally compared to when you cook them, and especially processed foods. And of course, if an individual consumes raw meat and dairy products, which you just talked about, right? There's right. an increased risk of contracting some type of foodborne illness, which is a huge no-no. So if you try it, you got to be very careful, especially with consuming raw beans, those like black beans, fava beans, kidney beans, lima beans, and navy beans, because those actually have some slightly toxic chemicals naturally found in them, which when you do cook them, it removes them all, which is why no one typically gets sick when they eat those things, because they're cooked. Mm. Now, if you do include these types of foods, you'd be better off going on, a, I would say, a partially raw food diet, which is... Maybe maybe 80% of the diet is raw, and then the other 20% would be the meats and beans that you cook to get around that element. I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference, for crying out loud. And even if you're on a more nutritious diet, it's still a good idea to supplement with a very high-potency multivitamin and mineral 
supplement you want to you know to protect your any possibility you know any it's good insurance against nutritional shortcomings and of course I'm going to say we recommend our product Vita Drive. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I guess now that you've talked about, it, I have heard about this where people are taking like avocado seeds and grinding them up and you know eating stuff like that. I think, like you said, you do have to be very, very careful because there are some things that you have to cook. And if you aren't a little more educated about this, you, you could run into some problems. But again, I think you got to keep your balance, uh, diet balanced, you know, and that's what I'm really a, a firm believer in is don't go too far to the left or too far to the right. You know, maybe incorporate some of these uh, principles, but don't, you know, depend on them 100%. Yeah, it's it's like anything else, all things in moderation. Yeah. And people will take a lot of these things to the extreme. And many times, unless you're, again, like we always talk about being in the, the super elite category where you need that one one thousandth of a second added to your, your, your sprint or whatever, it's just not worth the extra effort to get whatever result you think you're going to get. These diets, no diet is really magical. But, you know what I'm saying, these things are all, they're all good. Yep. Got to find what works for you. Yeah, well, we've got just a couple minutes left before we have to go to break and bring on our guest. So someone, <laughs> this is actually pretty good. It's a follow-up, uh, Lawrence Grand. Someone asked you guys to share what you think is your best exercise for building triceps. I want to know what that would be for biceps. Do the curls and win the girls. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you got, so you got the three Bs in that little statement. I love it. <laughs> These are good questions because they... Uh, you would never do one exercise, but I'll just throw out my number one exercise. If if I only had one exercise, I would do seated dumbbell curls. Seated dumbbell. Now, why is that? Well, you know, again, each arm is working independently. So if you have a, a stronger or dominant side where using a barbell, you know, your dominant side will, will control. Doing seated, uh, if you can find a bench that has a back to it, you're not going to be able to cheat as much. So you're going to be able to put greater isolation um, on that bicep. And again, working independently, um, it's just a great movement. Okay. And I think along those lines, if I just had to pick one and live and die by it, it would just be a, a traditional standing barbell curl. It's, it's, uh, it really targets those muscles. It's just one of those things that you have to pay a lot of attention to as far as form because as you get heavier and heavier, you watch guys start weaving back and forth and heaving and hoeing it because they want to get the weight up. But you know what? You're not doing yourself any favor when your shoulders are actually pulling up and you're getting all that momentum. You're not really increasing, if you will, when it comes to you know curling more weight. You, you could take an 80 80- 80 pound barbell and curl that thing and make it feel like it weighs 800 pounds if you do it with good form. It's always about that. Now, there is a point where you can use what's called cheat curls to help maybe build a little extra mass, but that's not something you want to do all the time. So, like you, you said seated dumbbell curls, and I say standing barbell curls if I had to pick one. And by the way, what was your little statement here again before we go? Oh, <laughs> do the curls for the girls. Curls for the girls. There you go. What was the other three Bs? Oh, big buff and beautiful, man. Big buff and beautiful. So there you go. Big buff, beautiful arms <laughs> if you do uh, either one of those. So how about this? Like I said, I think on the triceps, do standing barbell curls and seated dumbbell curls. And now you're going to supercharge it. And if you're a girl, you do the tries for the guys. There you go. There you go. So we got one. For, we're, uh, <laughs> we're not sexist on this show. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Well, look, we got to go to break so we can get back to our uh, guest segment. And we're going to bring on Stacey Shalemi, and we're going to have a great chat with her. So please stay tuned. We'll be right back. The doctor is in the house. Dr. Jeff, that is. More after this. Get out Let's go. Woo! We can win this one. Go team. Yes. Go team. Woo! Defense. Defense. Woo! Come on. <laughs> Dude, whose mom is that? <sighs> no idea. Not mine. Not mine. <laughs> Definitely not mine. Go! 
EFX Sports is a proud supporter of Billings High School Athletics. Just like that mom in the crowd, EFX Sports cheers for high school students to be the best. Make sure your teens are healthier this year by getting them off of the popular sugary drinks that claim to provide the electrolytes they need. Instead, use EFX Sports Carbolin. It's made right here in Billings and has no sugars. Just the healthy performance carbs that your kid's body craves during games. Call EFX Sports at 245-5793 in the Heights at All-American Pharmaceutical, and they'll be happy to help you understand what you can do to help your kids live healthier, stronger lives. EFX Sports, formulated to win. Hey, my name is Kyle, and I live right here in Billings. I would like to talk just for a minute about EFX Sports. At the beginning of this year, I took the EFX Resolution Challenge, which essentially it challenged me for three months to get in the best shape that I could, but by only watching what I eat, going to the gym for an hour a day, and using EFX Sports proteins and supplements. Well, in 90 days, I lost 27 pounds and almost four inches in the waist. That's all I did. The great thing about EFX Sports is, first of all, it's made right here in the Billings Heights at All American Pharmaceutical. Second, it works. There's no tricks or quick weight loss tricks. It's just a plan. Plan, that's it. If you would like to see what EFX Sports can do for you to get in shape once and for all, just call them, like I did, 406-245-5793. That's 245-5793. Learn how understanding nutrition can change your life today. Also check them out online at efxsports.com. And if you'd like to double check and make sure that everything that I am telling you is true, just check out my fan page on Facebook, Kyle Benton Resolution Challenge, and you can see my entire journey right there on Facebook. EFX Sports, formulated to win. Well, welcome back to the EFX Sports Show live on ESPN 910 Radio. Dr. Jeff Galini here with Brian Andrews. And as promised, we are into our spotlight segment and we have a very, very, very special guest that you have to tune in for this. Brian, why don't you go ahead and introduce Stacy, and we will get on with it. Yes, joining us today is uh, Stacy Chalemi, and she is a health expert and author who teaches individuals how to prevent, heal, and maintain optimal health using alternative medicines, herbals, vitamins, and good old-fashioned food. She's written books on alternative medicine, herbal remedies, self-help, positive thinking, and various health and nutrition topics, including meditation and yoga. So thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So tell me, how, how did you find your way into the health and fitness field, you know, in particular wellness for herbs and these alternative medicines? Well, it's a real crazy story. You know, at the age of five, I developed epilepsy. I struggled all mm. my life dealing with seizures. When I went to college, I also was struggling, you know, those late night studying and, and the uh, midterms and finals and all the stress that goes on. Um, I kept going back and forth struggling, uh, you know, trying to control my seizures with the doctors. Afterwards, I had met a um, herbalist. I started doing a lot of research, and I started doing working with that herbalist, and I started applying a lot of the stuff that I learned uh, to my own life. It was, uh, uh, you know, crazy because slowly my seizures started to decrease. I went from having nine seizures a month to six seizures a month to three seizures a month, finally becoming controlled. Mm. I really uh, focused a lot on um, on supplements and changing my lifestyle and vitamins, and I incorporated that in my life, and uh, I've had a, a real positive outcome. And so I try to teach, you know, the things that I've learned over the years to other people and try to have other people learn how to change their lifestyle to improve their health. And, that, and you know, that's an amazing story because I think, boy, you know, the, as you know, uh, Stacy and Brian, the whole natural foods industry, natural side of the thing, sometimes gets a bad rep. You know, uh, we do something similar, not necessarily exactly what you do, but you know, I get tired of people saying, you know, it's snake oil. There's no science behind it. It's no research. When you know, we can take a personal story like yourself and go, look, this is what I had. This is what the medical profession, the best they can do, and it wasn't good enough. And we see it time and time again. I remember several years ago, I was over in China, and a gentleman I took, he always was getting the sniffles and colds and what have you. And we got over there, and of course, he caught a cold. And in China, you know, everything is herbal medicine. So when we went to, uh, took him to the pharmacy, you know, they gave him a bunch of herbs, and he was so skeptical. And I said, no, trust me, just take them. 
And in like a day and a half, it had completely taken care of that. It's pretty amazing. You know, herbs are a powerful tool. And, you know, they've been doing this for thousands and thousands of years. And, you know, people, you know, uh, have, have improved their, their health tremendously through the usage of herbs and supplements. And, um, you know, it, this is not, you know, it might, you know, some things might not have scientific evidence, you know, it might not be approved by the FDA yet, but people have been doing this for thousands of years <laughs> and having such positive, you know, outcomes. Yeah. So obviously there, there's something behind it. And, and, you know, I always say, and again, nothing against, I always say nothing against doctors and the pharmaceutical industry, but they really band-aid stuff where natural medicine actually cures and heals and prevents and i think that's really one of the big things that that people um need to realize uh, what do you think on that oh i definitely uh think so you know you, you know with um with medication and all different you know sometimes you have to have medication and incorporate it in your life you know but for the for the most part a lot of medications have terrible long-term effects they might you know help the the uh symptoms that are occurring at the moment, they might take care of that, but they also might create another symptom. Then you go back to the doctor and say, I'm really feeling fatigued now. I don't feel, you know, this is bothering me. That's bothering me. They give you another medication to help with the fatigue. Before you know it, in a month or two, you have six medications on your on your counter and you're still not feeling good. And the overall aspect is that, you know, all these medications in the long run, they're really playing a toll on your organs, your body, your heart, you know, the way you feel, you know, and and. In, it really actually can do more damage than good, you know, unfor- unfortunately. But, you know, when we eat food and we eat vit- and we take vitamins and supplements, you know, if our body can, you know, process this because it's natural, when your body uh, takes in substance- substances that are natural, they don't know what to do with it. They start storing it in all different parts of the body. The body's not breaking it down. It's not going anywhere. And, and while it's in your body, it's causing damage. Where when you're taking, you're eating food and you're you're taking natural supplements and you're you know incorporating vitamins through herbs, through food, through supplements, whatever, it's breaking down. It's going to the parts of the body that it needs. You're seeing changes. You might feel more energetic. You might feel your circulation might be improving, so you have less muscle pain going on. You have those aches and pains are recovering quicker. Um, you know, fish oil, for example, is a great uh, you know supplement that many people use. That it helps the body. It you know it it helps brain function. It helps anti-inflammatory problems. Things that are natural can actually play help us more than those over-the-counter medications that we take. Yeah, absolutely. And you got to love all the commercials where they spend about ten seconds telling you what the drug is, and then the rest of it about all the side effects. And I like when they get to the end <laughs> and death. I, what did they say? Did they I say always death? Get to about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Well, and I think we're definitely all very similar in the belief that greatest modern medicine is because there are some miraculous things that can be done with it, many of this, these remedies and cures are all founded. They're right there in nature. Like you said, for thousands of years, people have known a lot of this. So is your goal to help the masses at large you know, understand this? And if so, I imagine that's why, you, like, for example, you're on our show. How, how are you going about getting the word out? You know, I try my best to, to get my name in the media and throw out my content. I have a website called The Complete Herbal Guide, and I throw on a lot of content about natural healing. I talk about, um, I talk about how to uh, different alternative ways through meditation, yoga, through eating properly, through using herbs that are in your own kitchen, uh, different exercises. I, 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 you know, try to educate people from all different aspects because there's so many different things that could actually help your body heal and make you, you know, feel healthy and, and reach optimum health um, and naturally. I also try to, you know, go on radio shows, speak with people like you, and, and try to go on TV and speak with, you know, different hosts and explain and, and educate society as a whole because, I, you know, people are now understanding that there are other ways besides over-the-counter medications to improve your health and to, and to stay young and to feel great and to feel energetic. And, you know, I do my best to try to get my name out there to try to, my, I have a huge following on my website. People come to read the article. So I do whatever I can. You know, I, I volunteer and I do a lot of different things just to, you know, to try to help others and educate. If we can help one person, that's hmm. an achievement. That's amazing. And is it true you were on my buddy, Dr. Oz show? Yes, I was. I, I've been on the show a few times. <laughs> Have you? <laughs> oh, how was that? Was that fun? Yeah, 
yeah, you know, it was very exciting. It was a, it was a great opportunity, and he is a wonderful person. He is a, he's a very good-hearted person who has the same goals as us. He wants to get out there and help people, and he definitely is helping a, a lot of people through his show. Yeah. And uh, it was a, a pleasurable experience, and I, uh, I was really happy to get on the show and to, you know, and to, you know, educate others. A lot of our guests who come on don't have as much media experience as you so my opening line is usually okay don't get uh, nervous there's only going to be about a hundred thousand people but you've been on dr oz so there was probably a cabillion people watching so <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> well yeah, so as you can imagine we, we deal a lot with athletes and people who are really into building a better physique so in other words these are right. people they're always on the lookout for the next big thing, you know, the wonder, whatever it is. You know, they're arguing for training secrets, you know, this magic diet, whatever it is. How do you think your expertise can help athletes and in what areas? The first thing I like to tell people is to figure out what deficiencies you lack. Everybody is different. We all have a different makeup. We all operate differently. So what's good for one person may not necessarily be good for the other person. I like to always suggest to maybe see an herbalist, get a full blood workout, find out what vitamins, nutrients, what you're deficient in, identify the problem, you know, and then also, you know, to try to optimize your own body function, to try to get yourself to the best you can be, see what you're, you're deficient in first, then try to incorporate those in your daily plan, in your daily diet, in your regimen, and start feeling the difference. And, you know, I'm sure once you start taking different supplements that your body needs, you'll see a difference. You know, some people may be a little bit deficient in vitamin D and zinc, and, you know, those are very important uh, testosterone boosters. You know, they always say that, you know, vitamin D is, is an excellent uh, vitamin to incorporate in your daily diet because we don't get enough of it, you know. yet You only get vitamin D through the sun. So zinc and, and vitamin D as a combo are, are great vitamins to incorporate in your uh, daily diet. And, you know, I, I always like to, you know, not tell people, take this, take this, take this. Let's see what you need first. And then there are different things that you can use, like amino acids, to help speed up recovery and repair. Because, like, when you're in, you know, when you're working out constantly, you know, you're tearing muscles. You know, you might be tearing muscles. You might be getting, you know, working yourself, overloading yourself. And amino acids are, are great. You know, they strengthen the body and they help repair the process of, you know, of your body after a really tough workout. So things like that I like to suggest uh, to people to so start you, them off. So you mentioned something about deficiencies and things. How would you recommend uh, somebody would find out if they're deficient in something? I would say to find a really good herbalist in your area, that a holistic doctor that is very educated, has a good reputation that um, that can actually help you. I went to a, a hormone therapist and, you know, because I was feeling very fatigued. I wasn't feeling like my usual self. So I went, they gave me a full blood workout, a, a different type of blood workout that they would give you in an MD's office. And, you know, I found out that I was deficient in a lot of things that I didn't think I was. And he put me on a strict plan of different foods, different vitamins to incorporate. And, you know, I... Believe it or not, after three months, I felt terrific. I felt, you know, I, I felt like my energy was actually back to its normal, you know, and even more so. You know, I was have I was feeling so fatigued for whatever reason, and I, I didn't even want to get out of bed. Then no. all of a sudden, he, he put me on all these vitamins and all these, you know, he gave me all these different things to do and naturally, and it made such a difference in my life. Yeah, and here in, in Montana, we call them naturopathic clinics. I think they probably call them that maybe in other areas, too. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, hey, hold, hold that thought right there. We do have to go to break, and when we get back, let's just pick up with that because this is kind of the meat and potatoes, in my opinion, of you know where your expertise lies and what we need to look for because, like I said, everyone's always looking for the next big thing, and you're showing us even the most basic things that can make a tremendous difference. So go to break, and when we get back, we're going to pick up right there. If you're a winner, keep it right here. EFX Sports is formulated to win. EFX! 
Hey, my name is Kyle, and I live right here in Billings. I would like to talk just for a minute about EFX Sports. At the beginning of this year, I took the EFX Resolution Challenge, which essentially it challenged me for three months to get in the best shape that I could, but by only watching what I eat, going to the gym for an hour a day, and using EFX Sports proteins and supplements. Well, in 90 days, I lost 27 pounds and almost four inches in the waist. That's all I did. The great thing about EFX Sports is, first of all, it's made right here in the Billings Heights at All American Pharmaceutical. Second, it works. There's no tricks or quick weight loss tricks. It's just a plan. That's it. If you would like to see what EFX Sports can do for you to get in shape once and for all, just call them, like I did, 406-245-5793. That's 245-5793. Learn how understanding nutrition can change your life today. Also check them out online at efxsports.com. And if you'd like to double check and make sure that everything that I am telling you is true, just check out my fan page on Facebook, Kyle Benton Resolution Challenge, and you can see my entire journey right there on Facebook. EFX Sports, formulated to win. Well, welcome back to the EFX Sports Show, live on ESPN 910 Radio. If you're just tuning in, Dr. Jeff Galini here with Brian Andrews, and we have um, Stacy Chalimi on the line, and we're just talking health. Before, Brian, you get on to that, I just wanted to say something. You've written over 20 books or 20 books. That's amazing. Oh, thank you. How do you find the time? I, <laughs> <laughs> you know, believe it or not, when I had my, my epilepsy, when they were trying to control it, I was, uh, my license, I had to stop driving, and they didn't want me to drive until my seizures were controlled. So I kind of felt, you know, imprisoned in my own home. And I was like, mm. you know, what am I going to do? And, you know... I I wanted to help. I wanted to, you know, get over my hump and I wanted, you know, I always was the type of person I, I enjoyed helping others. So I started writing, you know, I had a freelance business, but I wanted to focus on, you know, helping others. And I had wrote an article to the Epilepsy Foundation and I said to them, you know, I'm really, you know, struggling right now. I'd like to, you know, I want to help others and I want to learn from others also. And I said, you know, I would love to write a book and find out how I could cope with epilepsy and how others could cope with it. And I got letters from all over the United States and Canada, hundreds of letters, and I took those letters and the most inspiring letters and letters that really could teach others I took those and I incorporated it into my one of my first books, and I that was how I got started. Because once I wrote that book, I got so many responses. It did so well. People <laughs> were writing to me. One wow. person even said I was on the verge of wanting to commit suicide. I read your book. You gave me encouragement. I followed your regimen, and I'm doing great today. And when that, I read that that letter from that person, that was it. That was my inspiration. I needed to help others. I wanted to be there. I wanted to be an advocate for others. And I thought, you know, I could take these strategies and these tools I put in my book. They could apply to anybody. And that's how I got started. I I focused on helping others. And like I told you, when I started working for the herbalist and I started doing natural remedies and I saw how what an impact it had on my own life, I wanted to go out there and teach others also, you know, how to how to take, you know, different different alternative methods and different different ways of eating properly and put it all together and just help people with any condition, any any type of any problem or if they just wanted to improve the way they were feeling. Maybe they don't have a problem but they want to feel better for whatever reason. Can you give our listeners again uh, your website and where's the best to contact you? And then how can they find out about your books and and where they can get them from? My website is thecompleteherbalguide.com. It's all one word. My books are on my website and they're also on Amazon. I have the uh, herbal guide and I also have books on positive thinking and I have books uh, on various subjects about self-help. And they're all on my website, thecompleteherbalguide.com. And you can find me uh, just by typing my name in the uh, Internet, Stacey Chalemi. And all my websites, all my information will pop up. And I have a contact on the website that people can contact me directly if they have any questions or whatever, you know, anything they, they want to talk about. There you go, folks. you got to go check it out. Remarkable lady here. And <laughs> I'm looking at the list of books, and I'd like to get them all. I mean, they're just some cool topics. Brian, you yeah. like reading? Oh, yeah. I love to read. I love to learn. So, And actually, along those same lines, so you mentioned a little bit earlier about, like, say, vitamin D and its benefits. What are some other specific herbs or compounds you think that our listening audience should absolutely know about? And by that, I mean, what 
could you recommend they try to implement and to help with, you know, energy, I'm going to say mental acuity and recovery? Those are big areas, you know, in the sports and fitness world. And maybe we could just kind of go through each one and you could just kind of give some an overview of each one. So, for example, for energy. For energy, I like to use vitamin B. Vitamin B and vitamin B complex are great vitamins to incorporate in your daily diet. They help with mood. They help with energy. They actually detoxify the body, believe it or not. Um, I mm. love magnesium. Uh, magnesium is a great source of improving energy. It's also great if you take a Epsom salt bath after a workout. You you know, it's, you, it's a great feeling. It's a great pain, but it also hurts, you know. You might want to take an Epsom salt bath with magnesium, and magnesium goes right into the pores, into the skin, and helps those muscles. It helps to ease the sore uh, and to kind of soothe the uh, pain and decrease the pain. It also helps to reduce blood pressure, believe it or not. If people are suffering with blood pressure or they get stressed out, and magnesium is a great, great mineral to incorporate in your diet that actually is very uh, helpful. And vitamin D, like we were speaking, it, besides working with calcium to improve uh, bone density, it helps to reduce inflammation. So vitamin D is great, especially if your, your muscles get sore and you're a little bit inflamed. Take some vitamin D. Incorporate it into your daily diet. Take it in the morning, and you'll see a, a great uh, improvement. And vitamin C, you know, vitamin C also helps uh, wound healing, believe it or not. It's also, it's great for like, other things. You know, they found that it could also help with uh, breast cancer, believe it. It's off the topic, but these are great things just to, to do a little research on your own. I always tell people, be your own doctor. You know, you hear about things on the TV or you might hear about it on the radio, but look it up, read about it, learn about it. You know, you might realize that these things, you actually could be resourceful in your own life. And even like taking protein, incorporate protein and carbs in your diet. You know, it has a, a huge impact um, when you're working out. It's great to, to get for muscle building. Um, you know, I always tell others that's another great thing. And, uh, you know, you might want to put a little caffeine in your diet. It doesn't help with the muscles, but it, also, but it does help getting a little energy before that great workout. So I see one of your books is the, you got all kind of books here. I mean, you're like expert in everything. <laughs> how to buy a home but this one caught my eye uh, the ultimate guide to living longer and feeling younger what are some tips that you could give us i know you can't do it in, in just a, a question but but to help live longer i mean to expand the quality of life or extend it stress is a huge impact you know that over they say that over 90 percent of illnesses are caused by stress related problems in our lives we sometimes focus on things and we just um we get ourselves so overworked over the little things that we stress is a, is a terrible, terrible enemy of ours. And I say incorporate some yoga and um, meditation into your life. Just focusing on breathing. You're, you know, you get you see yourself getting overwhelmed. You see your breathing starting to get heavier. Focus in your head something that makes you happy. Then slow down the breathing. Breathing is a big thing of, to help to reduce stress. Do lots of different breathing exercises to help reduce the level of stress. You know, in life, you something right away, you might find out something or be in a situation all of a sudden, and you're getting really stressed. You could feel your blood just rising to a toll. Take some brief time to do a little bit of breathing. No one's going to know that you're doing it, but it actually relaxes you. And yoga has actually become so popular. Even guys are getting into it now. When it first became popular, you know, a lot of guys were like, oh, yoga, that's a girl's thing. But <laughs> nowadays, you go to a yoga class and you see half the class is guys because they're realizing the benefits. It helps with circulation of the muscles. It helps with flexibility. It helps with stress. It helps with focus and mentality. You know, you see a huge difference. And those are two great things that I say, you know, one should to help live longer, to live happier, feel younger. Um, those are great things to incorporate in your life as well. And also a little vitamin D to keep your skin moist. That, you nice. know, wrinkles are caused by dry <clears throat> skin. So you might want to keep taking those little vitamin Ds so we don't get those little laugh lines or little wrinkles on top of our forehead. <laughs> what, uh, what do you think about uh, going in the sun for some vitamin D? You need to go in the sun for, for vitamin D, but, you know, I, I find that the sun is so intense nowadays. It's not like, you know, when I was younger. I could go and I could soak in the backyard for hours, and, you know, the, the effects were, were not as bad. I, I noticed even from my own self, when I go in the sun, I'm starting to see those sunspots. I'm starting to see 
skin damage caused by the sun. People really need to really take sunscreen seriously. They need to really put a lot of sunscreen on their bodies. People want to get dark and get those beautiful tans, but, you know, you really need to think about protection and safety first before you just jump out in the sun. You know, even taking a, using a moisturizer before you leave the house, even in, you know, in the months that, the spring months, put some moisturizer on your face that has sunscreen in it on your body and, um, you know, and be, be smart. You know, people have to be smart and, and be safe. And those are the two things, two aspects they have to really keep in their heads. Now, see, Brian, here in Montana, we don't have to worry about sun, uh, but maybe like three uh, months out of the year. You guys got it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm actually in California. So, you know, the California oh, sun there is you a go. <laughs> Well, and, you, and just along the lines you were talking about stress, I mean, I, I agree with you. I think that's probably at the root of almost every illness under the sun. A lot of times you don't even know that stress is there until it's kind of too late. And kind of right. like we're talking about medications, most people self-medicate with, of all things, alcohol, which of course right. then leads down a pretty destructive path, especially with the body and the liver having to detox it and that sort of thing. So just to kind of pick up right there real quick, you talked about vitamin D. I know vitamin D is good for that. Is there anything else that can help from a natural standpoint? Of course, we got the meditation and breathing, but from just food and supplements. I like passion flower. Passion flower, its nickname is the natural tranquilizer. You can get it in an oral form or even a capsule form. The oral form is more potent, so it's a little bit stronger. And, you know, you take a drop or two, and if you don't like the way it tastes on your tongue, get a little water, even flavored water. Put it in there, take, you know, like a little Dixie cup and, and take it. And it actually relaxes the body. A lot of times, I'm even my own culprit. I'm always thinking about the next thing. What do I have to do? And at nighttime, when I have to get ready for bed, I'm still thinking about, all right, tomorrow i got to do X, Y, and Z. And when I have taken passion flower, it does relax the body. Also, magnesium and potassium together really relax the body. I actually take those two every night before I go to bed. You take a couple of, um, of uh, it depends how strong each capsule is. Every, you, know, you really have to look into that. But for me, my own, I, I take potassium and magnesium, and I see a difference. Within a couple of minutes, I see my body starting to calm down, wind down. I feel relaxed, and I'm able to get in bed, and uh, my mind is not racing like it normally does. It, it definitely, those combos actually help a lot. Isn't that amazing that, again, this is just natural herbs. These are natural compounds that have been around right under our noses for thousands of years. And, again, most people's alternative is to turn to a, quote-unquote, nightcap or something that has to be prescribed, which is just horrendous for your body, especially in the long term. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. I was, I was going to say, Stacy, we, we might have to get together and uh, put together the Stacy C uh, herbal uh, supplement line. Yeah, you see, I would that's love exactly to do what that. I was getting ready to say. How funny! <laughs> that's uh, you know, that's uh, that's our other side of our business is we uh, we're a contract manufacturer, so we might have to do something. You got some great ideas here, and and you know, oh, I would love to. My last thing, which I was going to kind of allude to, which I always say is, folks, you know, you got to be careful where you buy these things from, and and you probably agree, Stacy. You know, the dollar store is not the best place to go buy your vitamins or herbs. Definitely. I tell people this all the time. Before you buy a vitamin, look at the ingredients. Before you buy a supplement, look at the ingredients, especially with vitamins. There's so many fillers. A lot of companies, when you say, well, it's so cheap, you know, it's all the same thing. It's not. Mm -hmm. You pay for what you get. You really need to look in the back to make sure. If I always say to people, if you don't know a lot about vitamins, if you see a lot of words that you don't understand and they're little big words, it's probably not good for you. <laughs> you want to try to get the pure, you know, uh, con you know, type of vitamin you possibly can get because, you know, a lot of these vitamins will say, you know, X amount of milligrams of so-and-so and you have all these fillers. Before you know it, it's actually only a small portion of that vitamin or supplement and the rest is just fillers and, and stuff that's not good for the body and that actually can do more harm than good. So you really, there's also, there's websites on the uh, internet that actually, that look into the best companies to uh, buy vitamins and the best supplement companies and they, they look into, you know, um, you know, you really have to be cautious. It's, you know, you have to look in the back of the, every vitamin you buy and really, you know, know what you're getting. And you can even, if you're buying vitamins online, look at the ingredients. If you don't, if they don't show you the ingredients, don't get it. And then, like I said, be your own doctor. Go in and find out what those things are if you don't know what they are. But you need the purest form of any vitamin or supplement because there are a lot of places that, they, you know, it's become a huge industry because people know how much people want to do things naturally. But you need to really look into 
where you're buying it, and what's in it. Well, Stacy, we really appreciate your time with us today. This has been a tremendous uh, interview here. We appreciate the information you're giving out and what you're doing to actually help people, and again, mostly from the natural standpoint, to lengthen someone's life and improve it at the same time. But unfortunately, we are out of time for this episode. So thank you again for being on. We also as always like to thank our listening audience. And thank you to ESPN 910 for having us on each week. And we will close right here. So thank you and goodbye. You've been listening to the EFX Sports Show, formulated for winners by winners. If you missed the show, just go to EFXSports.com to find the free podcast downloads. EFX Sports is a product of All American Pharmaceutical and based in Billings, Montana. If you want to get in touch with the doc or get your questions answered on the next show, email Dr. J at ALLAMPH.com. EFX Sports, formulated to win.